Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Do you know that China is internationally referred to as the infrastructure maniac? This is not a derogatory term, but rather reflects the awe of Americans towards China's remarkable capacity for constructing large-scale engineering projects. As one of the world's largest developing countries, China has considered infrastructure development as a crucial means to achieve economic and social progress. Over the past few decades, China has invested heavily in infrastructure projects such as highways, high-speed railways, giant bridges, ports, and airports. These projects have not only improved the standard of living for the Chinese people but also propelled rapid economic growth. In this video, we will explore China's incredible mega-engineering projects. But before we dive into the discussion, we kindly ask for your support by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. We value your thoughts and invite you to share your perspectives in the comments below. Without further ado, let's embark on an extraordinary journey. First, let's go back over 100 years to China's landscape of fragmented mountains and poor transportation. However, after more than a century of development, today's China has risen like an awakened oriental lion. In this lengthy historical process, what transformations has China undergone? And how has it gradually accomplished unprecedented landscape changes on Chinese soil? This video will provide detailed answers to these questions. Before delving into the discussion, Let's first re-examine the geographical landscape of China. You may already know that China extends greatly from north to south and is vast from east to west, covering a land area of 9.6 million square kilometers, making it one of the countries with the richest natural resources globally. However, on the flip side, China's terrain is complex, with mountains and hills occupying over 60% of the land area. More notably, after thousands of years of development, by the time of the founding of the new China, the forest coverage had fallen below 9%, and issues of land desertification and salinization were becoming increasingly severe. American experts couldn't help but marvel at the severe degradation of the natural environment in this country, facing serious challenges of transportation obstacles, uneven resource distribution, environmental deterioration, and fragmented landscapes. So, what measures should China take to change its destiny? One crucial step is to build bridges, spanning large rivers, high mountains, and straits, cleverly connecting this vast country into a unified whole. A hundred years ago in China, there was only a railway spanning approximately 9.3 kilometers, a steel bridge with a main span of 62 meters, and a tunnel measuring 261 meters in length. It wasn't until 1937, with the completion of the hangzhou chantang River Bridge, that the Chinese people had their first domestically designed and built dual-use road and rail bridge. In the following less than four years, the construction of the Wuhan-Yangtze River Bridge allowed the Chinese to successfully traverse the Yangtze River for the first time. Despite the withdrawal of all Soviet experts, the young generation of Chinese bridge engineers overcame numerous challenges to successfully design and construct the Nanjing-Yangtze River Bridge. Thus, the railways that had faced each other across the Yangtze for decades finally merged into one, giving birth to the Jinghuang and Jinghu, the two major channels. However, the single span lengths of these bridges were still limited and couldn't adapt to more complex terrain conditions. 
It wasn't until 1991, with the completion of the Shanghai Nanpu Bridge, that the Chinese people truly embarked on the pioneering path of independently constructing large span bridges. Subsequently, China's bridges became more diverse and grandiose, not only spanning the Yangtze River with a single span, but also soaring directly over gorges at an elevation of 565.4 meters above the valley floor. At the same time, China has made significant progress in tunnel engineering. It took China nearly a century to complete the construction of its first 10,000-meter tunnel. Over the subsequent two decades, significant breakthroughs were achieved, with tunnels extending to lengths of 20,000 meters and even 30,000 meters. Such engineering accomplishments have left American engineers profoundly astonished. The former qinghai Tibet Railway required a climb of 600 meters, taking two hours to circumvent the Guangzhou Mountains. Today, with an ultra-long tunnel stretching 32,690 meters, it only takes 20 minutes to directly traverse the Guangzhou Mountains. It is through these tens of thousands of tunnels and millions of bridges that the Chinese people can easily traverse mountains and rivers. Chinese engineers have connected railways and roads to every county and village in China, thus building the world's largest highway network and high-speed railway network. Today, China's transportation network covers the entire country, efficiently delivering 1.76 billion passenger trips and 46.2 billion tons of goods annually to every corner of the vast Chinese territory. However, behind these staggering numbers lies a massive restructuring of population and resources. A century ago, China's population was approximately 400 million, but today it exceeds 1.4 billion, surpassing the total of all developed countries worldwide. Accompanying this demographic shift, China has undergone the largest urbanization process on the planet. Currently, China has six urban areas with a resident population exceeding 10 million, 10 super cities with over 5 million residents, and 77 large cities with populations surpassing 1 million. These cities are poised to become representatives of future global urban civilization development. Over 2,000 years ago, this suspended plank road clinging to cliffs was one of the crucial passageways in Sichuan. However, not far away, a high-speed train with a speed of up to 250 km per hour shuttles through the Qingling Mountains, connecting Xi'an and Chengdu. Heading south, the Beijing Kunming Expressway, with the help of towering super bridges reaching a height of 100 meters, ascends to the Yungui Plateau, linking Chengdu and Kunming. Turning westward, the two Sichuan Tibet highways traverse the Henduan Mountains, making the Qinghai Tibet Plateau no longer inaccessible. The roads connecting Sichuan form a powerful modern mega bridge network in China. So, how did China overcome numerous obstacles to create these super bridges? And what have they brought to China? To find answers to these questions, we first come to a super mountain range that separates North and South China with the strength of a mountain, Qinling. This mountain range, like a giant dragon, sprawls across the Chinese landscape. With a wide and thick body and continuous mountain ranges, it narrows to nearly 100 kilometers at its narrowest point in the north-south direction. Coupled with towering ridges, Qinling has become an insurmountable barrier between the Sichuan Basin and the Guangzhou Plain. The Baoqing Railway is the first railway that crosses the Qinling, connecting Baoji and Chengdu. However, to traverse this mountain, the train must ascend over 800 meters within a straight line distance of 25 kilometers, and the slope will exceed the safety limit for train operation. To mitigate the slope, the railway winds in multiple layers, effectively extending the straight line distance to over 40 kilometers, significantly reducing the difficulty of the train's ascent and forming this winding mountain railway. However, frequent curves significantly slow down the train, and the average speed here is only about 30 kilometers per hour. If faster travel is desired, the only option is to cross the Qinling Mountains. With the continuous advancement of engineering and construction technology in China, trains no longer need to detour around wide and thick mountains but can directly traverse through extremely long tunnels, thereby piercing through the mountains completely. In this way, you will see an almost perfectly straight road cutting through the mountains, allowing high-speed trains, 
reaching up to 250 km per hour, to smoothly pass through, this is the Xiching High Speed Railway. However, what enables it to smoothly traverse the mountains is not just a single tunnel but a group of super tunnels consisting of a series of ultra-long tunnels. This includes six special tunnels each exceeding 10 kilometers in length. In total, 20 tunnels form the Qingling Tunnel Group, covering a length of 126 kilometers. This means that 94% of the entire Qingling Railway line runs through tunnels. With the assistance of this series of tunnels, the travel time from Xi'an to Chengdu has been reduced from the original 11 hours to just 3 hours. In this way, China has successfully connected the Northern Passage through the Super Tunnel, enabling Sichuan to be directly linked to the National High Speed Rail Network for the first time. However, breaking through in just one direction is far from enough. China needs to continue southward, heading towards the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau with an average elevation of over 4,000 meters. Compared to the low-lying Sichuan Basin, the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau has a higher average elevation, with a drop of up to 2,000 meters between the two regions. To enter this area, any road must continuously climb. For example, the Chengdu Kunming Railway, completed in 1970, faced skepticism from Soviet experts who asserted that the Chinese couldn't construct a road in such harsh terrain. However, Chinese engineers, relying on talent and a spirit of hard work, successfully opened up the legendary road to the plateau within a few years. Today, another superhighway along the Chengdu Kunming Railway requires only about 11 hours for cars to travel from Chengdu to Kunming, which is 8 hours faster than regular trains. This is the Beijing Kunming Expressway. However, to ascend to the plateau, the Beijing Kunming Expressway also faces the challenge of climbing, especially in the segment from Yin to Xichang, where there is a continuous ascent of 51 kilometers. As a high-speed highway designed for a speed of 80 km per hour, such long and steep slopes significantly increase the risk of driving. To reduce the slope, Chinese engineers employed a method of ascending in two continuous spirals in place, cleverly bypassing sections with harsh geological conditions and building a pair of unique double spiral tunnels in the mountains. However, between these two tunnels is not flat ground but a deep mountain valley meaning the power of bridges is needed. Thus, towering bridges come into play, with the highest bridge deck towering over 100 meters above the ground, making driving on it feel like flying in the air. This is the Yashi Expressway before us, resembling a thrilling roller coaster. The towering bridge piers use a specially designed steel tube concrete structure, not only reducing weight but also exhibiting excellent seismic performance. On this unique mountain road composed of bridges and tunnels, cars can climb over 1,000 meters in less than 20 minutes, with a gentle slope throughout the journey, almost feeling like driving on flat ground. With the completion of projects such as the Labajin Bridge, Nabashan Tunnel, and Guanyinian Dada River Bridge, the most challenging section of the Beijing Kunming Expressway is finally finished. From now on, the mountains in the Sichuan Basin have become a passage connecting the north and south. However, on the other side, the land appears barren. To this day, there is no railroad passing through, and this is the essential route to the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. Here, people must face towering mountains, and deep valleys, and layer upon layer of the Hengduan Mountains. However, constructing a road from Sichuan to Tibet poses a hellish challenge. Arriving in this mystical land requires crossing not ordinary mountain ranges but the world's most densely packed Hengduan mountain region, formed by seven mountain ranges and six major rivers. Moreover, the plateau to traverse is not an ordinary one but the Qinghai Tibet Plateau with an average elevation exceeding 4,000 meters. This implies that to build this road, a combination of more powerful super tunnels and mega bridges is necessary. This is a 13.4-kilometer long highway tunnel. During its construction, the tunnel needed to cross 13 fault zones. As a result, construction workers could only advance 3.6 meters per day on average, taking five years to complete. In comparison, the longest tunnel in the high-speed railway tunnel group in the Qingling Mountains averages a daily progress of 13 meters. 
After the tunnel was completed, Chinese engineers faced the barrier of a surging river, the Dada River. Today, a new bridge has been erected upstream of the looting bridge. To connect the road and bridge deck, engineers must construct a span of 1,100 meters at a height of over 200 meters above the river surface. This span, 11 times longer than that of the looting bridge, is known as the Looting Dada River Bridge. As a suspension bridge, the Looting Dada River Bridge primarily relies on the two main cables on the left and right to bear the weight of the entire structure. How did engineers achieve this feat? The answer becomes apparent when we turn our gaze to the shore. On the side of the bridge, the main cables are anchored by a massive concrete structure, known as the gravity anchor, weighing as much as 230,000 tons, firmly securing the main cables. However, on the other side, where the mountain is steep, there is not enough space to accommodate such a massive gravity anchor. Therefore, engineers had to choose to excavate a tunnel inside the mountain, measuring 159 meters in length, turning the anchor into a giant expanding screw, and securing the main cables firmly within the mountain. This is now the world's longest tunnel anchor. With the support of a special structure, including a central buckle, the Looting Dada River Bridge is not only capable of withstanding crosswinds equivalent to a Category 12 typhoon in the valley, but also remains intact even during a powerful earthquake measuring up to magnitude 6. The clever integration of super tunnels and mega bridges continually upgrades the road to Tibet. Simultaneously, the travel time from Chengdu to Kangding has been reduced from two days to just over three hours. However, this is only the first challenge on the journey. Continuing westward, one faces mountain ranges with altitudes exceeding 5,000 meters. The terrain is rugged, and the environment harsh, with nearly vertical river cliffs. Building roads in such conditions is unbelievably challenging. The ongoing construction of the Sichuan-Tibet Railway is expected to take over a decade to fully traverse the Hanwan Mountains. However, once completed, it will become an engineering marvel that will astonish the world. Additionally, as the Shanghai Chongqing High Speed Railway, Chengdu Chongqing Expressway, and other passageways connect the eastern regions of the Yangtze River, Sichuan's links with the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River have become unimpeded. Nowadays, China has mega bridges, and the continuous mountain ranges are no longer insurmountable obstacles. The basins are no longer isolated islands separated by numerous barriers. China's capability to construct mega bridges in such challenging environments signals its readiness to embark on future endeavors, spanning across more mountain ranges, plateaus, and every location in need of connectivity for the development of additional expressways. This could imply the construction of more super tunnels and bridges, connecting every city, village, and corner of this land. On the map of China, bridges are scattered across the country like veins. Currently, there are over 960,000 various types of road bridges in China, and nearly half of the extensive 40,000-kilometer high-speed rail network consists of concrete bridges. These bridges span high mountains and rivers, connecting towns and villages, making China the bridge capital of the world. China's remarkable strength in bridge construction has led many to believe that China is now a developed country. What are your thoughts on China's astounding capabilities in bridge construction? Is there a particular bridge that has left a lasting impression on you? We look forward to hearing your valuable thoughts and insights in the comments section. Lastly, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care and goodbye.